Welcome back again. This is Fox, the next installment in our satisfactory Let's Play. It's been a while, I know. Um, this save has progressed a lot, but I'm rolling back through uh, previous saves just to show you the progression and try and deliver it to you as logically as I can. Uh, when you joined me last time, we had done all of the production on this floor. Everything you can see here we went over. This is all of the basic materials, all of the raw materials coming in. Everything is being produced on this floor apart from the encased uranium cells and the actual uranium fuel rods theirself. We managed to bust all the stuff together, we brought it up to this platform and it just need divided up. So these four items here are going to the cased uranium cells. We've got one, two, three, four lines. We've got sulfur, uranium, silica, and quick wire. Now, if you know me, you know I like to divide things by nine, mainly because I've got nine different platforms up here, each which are going to have three nuclear reactors on each. So each one of these manufacturers, actually each one of these manufacturers over here, is going to be producing enough uranium fuel rods for one row of three nuclear reactors. So I've got nine encased uranium, nine, what are these, are plutonium uranium cells, encased uranium cells. So I've got nine manufacturers making their encased uranium cells. I have simply just fed them underneath. Everything is balanced, so each line comes down to the middle. Gets split three ways, so each group of three manufacturers. And then you'll see, gets split again. So the centre one goes into the middle manufacturer, goes left, right. So we've got three groups of three here in effect. The belt gets divided by three twice. So one time to divide it by the three groups of three. So one, two, three. And then one again to feed the actual manufacturers in each group of three real straightforward I, i'm going to repeat this throughout the save people in my discord always asking me the best way to deal with things um doing big manifolds and stuff anytime you can divide it by a multiple of three do it um or even six or twelve i mean they're ultimately all multiples of three any time you any time you can divide it by three just do it i mean all of these manufacturers are overclocked ever so slightly you can see they're overclocked 103.7 percent making me 20.74 encased uranium cells a minute now this is exactly what each one of these manufacturers over here making the uranium cells needs 20.667 this says this says 20.74 so we will have a tiny backlog it's minimal i mean there's no point just overflowing it and getting rid of it because it's not going to stop nothing else in the system these using these are using caterium silica uranium and sulfur nothing is interfered with the oil processing because obviously this is making heavy oil residue for other stuff polymer resin is making the rubber that then goes to the beacons and stuff Sterling coke's making the steel so this is the only thing that could cause problem if this was to back up but it won't so yeah nine manufacturers making the in case uranium cells the output comes down they're just bust straight across and then fed into each manufacturer where they are mixed with the other goods coming up here on these which are electromagnetic control rods crystal oscillators and the beacons so as you can see pipes in the background we'll go over that in a bit my main problem then was trying to get this to the top and each individual manufacturer as i say is feeding a row of three nuclear power plants so i simply belted it all the way up to the top you can see this one is full this one is full that's because these aren't connected up yet so the outputs from these manufacturers each come in to one of the sides it's just simply belted nothing fancy it doesn't look brilliant but the belts have just been snaked across each to one of these outputs on these walls this wall is dead in line with one of the platforms above which then goes to three nuclear reactors so belts come up all the way up inside this nonagon you can see i've just simply just used lifts step the lift out step it back in comes up through the floor 
and then they are simply just getting split again groups of three couldn't be simpler so the middle one goes there from this is a just a standard splitter so then the middle one goes down two sides come out each one is feeding its own manufacturer um yeah it was really straightforward to do this i literally just plopped a splitter like that got the output Couldn't be easier. Looks nice and neat. And then each one of these goes to its own nuclear reactor, which is at the end of this run. Um, the water is another thing entirely. This has been such a big pain. I mean, it looks a mess here. I have devised a better way to do this on the ones later down the line, which you will see in another video. But yes, water. These nuclear reactors are all slightly overclocked because I originally needed 28 nuclear reactors per platform, but 28 you can't divide by 9. 27 is divisible by 9, which is 9. Three groups of 9. 9 times 3. So we've got 9 platforms, 3 nuclear fractures on each is 27. That means every single one of these nuclear reactors needs to be overclocked ever so slightly. Uh, they are not done yet. I can work it out quickly. 28. It's 103.71. percent That means they need 308 water a minute. That meant, that meant I simply could not just have one 300 pipe per nuclear reactor, which would have made everything a whole lot easier and saved me 4 million hours in trying to deal with these glitchy 600 pipes that never work properly. But anyway, suffice to say, each cluster of nuclear reactors needed three 600 pipes, all with 300 and a bit in. Now, just to make sure I've got enough water and they weren't running on dribs and drabs, I've got four extractors all over the clock to full. So these are all producing 300 a minute. So I'm producing 1200 M3 a minute, where I only needed something like 600 and uh, 910. But they don't stall. If you give them more water, it's always better to have more water than not enough. So just for ease of it, I've got four extractors all output in the max amount. And then they're just blended into three pipes. You can see this is the pipe that's splitting in three. So this one goes to the left pipe. This one goes to the middle pipe. This one isn't connected as of yet. This one goes to the right pipe and then this one simply splits in three and injects whatever it needs to top these pipes up. So all of these pipes, it shows them running at full because not all of the nuclear reactors are running at the end. But suffice to say, this would need 1800 water for these all to be at full. I'm only outputting 12, so they run at about 400 M3 each. So yeah, then I had to work out a cunning way to get them all to the top. Now, I'm going to fast forward a bit in a bit and show you what this looks like when it's all done. But I need nine groups of these. So you can imagine what it's going to look like. Nine groups of these extractors running out backwards. <coughs> Excuse me. Nine groups of these extractors running out backwards takes up a lot of space. And there's a lot of pipes. This is all the pipes we're going to need. But obviously, I need all the extractors all of these pumps, all this fan dangling and messing around with the pipes to get them up here and then they all need pumps at varying different intervals to get them to the top. I can find a way in. You can see they come in, they come up and then I have had, don't ask me why, but I have had to put pumps on here in a future video. I have devised a better way to get these to each individual section of pipes. As I say, I'll show you that in a later video when one of the clusters is all done. But for now, this is what I decided to go with just to get them in all up to one floor and then bridged out to where they need to be. Doesn't look pretty. There's a lot of clipping. But as I say, it will be adapted later on down the line. They simply then come up this wall 
Mark two pipes wherever they need to be to get them to the top. Following the same line as the belts. Inputting into the nuclear reactors and then everything is full. And one of these isn't working correctly as you can tell. The nuclear waste is nearly full. I am using the nuclear waste cheat for now. Just to free everything up. Keep it running. Just to make sure I could uh, get everything working. When this is done, I have now decided to... Uh, I have now decided to process all of the nuclear waste individually for each structure. I was going to bust all the nuclear waste together, build it in a huge factory over there. But the numbers were horrible. It was going to be an awful lot of blenders. And from my experience, any time you can do anything in smaller clusters like I have done here, it makes it a whole lot easier to troubleshoot. So the plan is, in between each structure making the fuel rods, there will be its own individual factory. I'll try and keep it looking similar to this if I can. Processing the nuclear waste into plutonium fuel rods and then they will be sunk. So each platform will have its own factory next to it and these spaces getting rid of the waste. That is my ultimate plan, to have all the nuclear reactors possible from the uranium on the planet and then zero waste. So that is the initial plan. This looks pretty cool though. I am going to skip forward now. I'm just going to pause this jump forward show you what one of these well i think i've completed two of these now show you what these look like when they're all done and yeah we'll see you in a second and we're back big big difference big difference in the uh, skyline i have used area actions to copy and paste the uh, manufacturers and everything all the way across the board so every single one of these structures has now got all of the machines ready to make the uh, fuel rods all of the nuclear reactors are in place two of these structures are done and complete as you can see with the fumes coming out area reactions is brilliant for this um, it saves you a crazy amount of time as i said before i will be doing a full series on area actions if it's a mod you're interested in using for these massive projects it saves you hundreds of hours the only well it's not a downfall because well it is a downfall it doesn't enable you to copy and paste all of the belts and the pipe works and the power it's literally just foundations and machines so just the basic layout of everything up here i've then got to go in and belt everything up <coughs> excuse me i've then got to go in and belt everything up um yeah give it all power do all of the pipe work get it all connected but this is what it looks like when it's done i'm undecided as to what i'm going to do in regards to wrapping this part of the factory but here's all the water those clusters of uh those clusters of water extractors that I've shown you in the previous previous part are all under here. All set up exactly the same. It was getting too big to have all nine running this way, so I've got seven coming out from the factory horizontally. And then the last two I put on the sides. Just so you can see what's going on, so you can see a bit of the pipe work and get the idea what's going on. I think it looks pretty cool. Um there's no real neat way to do this pipe work very very finicky to get these flowing right this cross section here has to be exactly there for all of the head lifts on these machines to work together and get it up to these pumps if it's higher it doesn't work if it's lower it doesn't work don't ask me why it's how these crazy pipes and the fluid mechanics work in this game but that was very there's a very very fine line between getting this set up to actually pump the water up to this height or having to have an extra pump at the outset of every machine, which I really did not want. So yes, all of the water comes up. Fed into this water bus system. Up. Into the central column that I showed you before. This is still a mess. I still haven't readopted the advised system I spoke to you about earlier. This one is for the waste. This is going to bring this all down. You'll see that in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, it looks really cool when you look up it's also very loud with all the pumps going so nuclear fuel rods go up water goes up and then eventually all of the waste will come down this central spire so we'll check that out now yeah they're all working it's symmetrical in regards to that each one of these kicks out to the side so as you spin around it looks symmetrical i mean 
people with OCD are not going to like it. These uh, obviously these um, constructors will be deleted, and these platforms will be all these perfect triangles when it comes to it, so they all look nice and nice and neat. And these bits of concrete that I don't need will be out of the way, so it'll all look perfect from underneath. I am probably gonna cantilever each one of these platforms a little bit. I'm maybe just using the beams or something just to punch them down and give it some more support to make it look a little bit better. But for now, this is what each one of these clusters is going to look like when it's done from above. Minus the constructors. Pretty sick. So happy with how this turned out. So yeah, as I say, at the minute the waste is just being fed into the constructors to get rid of it until I set up the plutonium production. But eventually the waste will come out of here, up onto this belt. Gets merged together in groups of three, merged together in another group of three, all into the middle, and then it's getting shot down here. So one line of waste, each one of these is producing, I forget what it is, 10 point something a minute. There'll be 200... And Does it tell me how much waste? Yeah, 10.28 uranium waste per minute. So 10.28 times 27. Each one of these is making 277 waste a minute. Times that by nine eventually is <clears throat> just shy of two and a half thousand waste. It should be 2,520, but I think the decimals in the overclocks that I've used are going to make it ever so slightly lower than that. So yeah, then the waste will come down the spire. I think we will try and get it out this way if we can. Try and get it out there, along here, down, hidden in this sandwich layer, and then belt it across to its respective factory, turning the waste into the plutonium cells to eventually sink. Yeah, I'll box this all in very minimal. Again, I was thinking about some nice designs. I may use these roofing, these roofing sections here. This is what I was thinking. Just to give it a similar feel, similar feel to this section up here, the three roofs, a bit of continuity. I will put some railings around the edge and I'll probably change up this section here. I may have some glass panels. I may like, again, this was just what I was thinking out before this, before I started this video. I may just have like a couple of observation windows if you like so that you can see what's going inside and it doesn't doesn't just look like a blank horrible wall give it a nice little bit of texture, bit of difference uh, again, I'll probably do something with these edges just to change it up a bit. Maybe use a different wall frame. Maybe use the concrete wall that I've been using. Just to add a bit of variety again. Just to make it not look so much like a big white box hiding everything. And yeah, that'll be it. Then it's just repeat nine more times. I say I've done two. They they do not honestly take me all that long. It's probably fifteen hours in total. Maybe maybe twenty hours in total. So I mean it, it is a long time, but if I was playing this every evening for two or three hours, I could probably complete one of these a week. Now it's gonna take me a bit longer than that because I'm working along with my Anno project as well, but I am moving very soon, I know I keep saying it, they keep putting it off, but definitely by the end of this month I will be in my new house and I will be uh, able to stream, so I'll still do these little recap videos for people that are not able to catch me on Twitch, so they know the progress of each one of my games, like my Anno and Satisfactory, but 
any time I'm working pretty much on this project or the Anno project, I will be streaming it. So you can hop over there, hang out with me, ask any questions that you want. But for now, that's going to be it. Uh, I will quickly talk about the bringing in of the goods for the plutonium. I've worked out what I'm doing with the plutonium, which recipes I'm using, and I've already started bringing the items in in preparation for that. same method i'm just stacking it all on this giant bus this will all be belted in and i'll make this look cool at the end so i've already got in the iron ore the copper and the quartz that i needed for this um there is obviously more i need limestone i need a small amount of caterium i need a pure sulfur node and another 600 pipe of oil and that's it it wasn't it's not an awful lot probably a bit about the same amount of stuff here minus the uranium so yeah surprisingly not la not surprisingly not a very large amount of goods needed to protest the plutonium if you use some very smart recipes uh a very active member of my group group swoosh has uh done most of the work for me i've been out and tinkered with some of the recipes that is used because i like using the coke ingot recipe it saves on the use for coal and the stuff so i've swapped that out i've also changed the heat sink recipe to the one that uses rubber again because it just uses oil it's ever so easy to make uh i'm not using the recycled rubber and plastic recipes because they're just a massive pain uh I, it's a lot easier just to use the residual recipe and yeah so all of the goods to make the plutonium will be coming down here split off again equally into the factories in between make the plutonium fuel rods sink it and then we're going to have one giant nuclear power plant using all the uranium in the world making four billion gigawatts of power with no waste and then we can work out what we've got left on the map in regards to resources and build something else as equally as stupid but for now that's going to be it please join me in the next one i don't know what i'll do on the next one I think now I've got these two up and running, I'm going to work on one of the plutonium production plants just to get that all figured out and see how it fits in between these buildings, work out design. So I'll show you that and then the rest will just be done on stream pretty much, just grinding through it to get it all done, getting it all look nice and pretty. Uh, yeah, as always, please subscribe if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Come join the Discord, there'll be a link in the description and to my Twitch, which I will be streaming on very shortly. But yeah, for now, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned. We'll see you in the next one.